this is Jared Walton with PC Gamer. I'm looking at Intel's new i7-7700K, but I'm going to focus on the integrated graphics this time just for kicks. I've got 15 games to test, so let's check them out and we'll see how many of them can be playable. Ashes of the Singularity, our first game, not going to work. No matter how low your settings go, this one's just not working. Battlefield 1, on the other hand, actually scales down pretty low to the hardware level, so you can mostly play it. It's not perfect, but it's playable. Civilization 6 is a little bit better. It's not that the frame rates are high, but the game's simply not that demanding because the mouse is decoupled from the frame rendering. Deus Ex Mankind Divided. This game, definitely not playable. It's one of the slowest running games in our benchmark suite. So you can just chalk this one up to requiring a discrete graphics card. The Division, also not that great. It's somewhat playable, but honestly the frame rates are too low to make this an enjoyable experience. Doom does not support Vulcan on the Intel integrated graphics. Performance is similar to The Division. Depending on the level, you can actually play the single player okay, but it's mostly not that great. Fallout 4. This game is also pretty demanding, but because of the VATS auto-targeting system, you can actually do okay with the integrated graphics. Not the best experience, but it's okay. Far Cry Primal. Even at the lowest settings, this one's not playable. We're getting 22 frames per second or lower, so yeah, you'll want a better card. Grand Theft Auto V, on the other hand, works pretty well. The average frame rate is in the 46 frames per second range, and it only dips below 30 frames per second occasionally. Hitman, again, not very playable. You could probably get by in a pinch, but it's mostly below 30 frames per second and it doesn't lend itself very well to this type of graphics card. Overwatch is one of the highlights of our test sequence. Here I'm getting about 55 frames per second. You can even lower the quality further and improve frame rates even more. Rise of the Tomb Raider, another terrible game for integrated graphics. This one needs a pretty beefy graphics card to be playable and HD 630 just isn't going to cut it. Shadow Warrior. Now this one the video is all screwed up. Like it was getting 36 frames per second but the video does not show that accurately. It's actually pretty playable. Total War Warhammer is a strategy game and again it's not quite as demanding as the first person shooters so you could definitely handle this one on the integrated graphics. And finally the worst of our test sequence is The Witcher 3. This one is just not going to run well on anything short of a pretty substantial graphics card or some major mods to reduce the quality a lot further. 15 games, two that I would call fully playable, and a couple more somewhat playable, and quite a few that were simply not playable at all. Obviously, this is not a graphic solution designed for the latest and greatest games. You could play stuff like League of Legends or other similar eSports titles, and it should work fine. But if you're looking at playing the latest AAA titles, you'll definitely want a discrete graphics card. The problem is that as soon as you plug in a discrete graphics card, all of the integrated graphics and multimedia functions that are built into KB Lake get turned off. You can't do anything like quick sync or use the 4K Netflix support or any of these extra features, which means one third of the processor die is basically gone to waste if you're a gamer. That doesn't make the chip bad, it just means it's built for mobile first and not for desktop users. Anyway, hope you enjoyed watching. This is Jared Walton. Thank <laughs> you.